Good morning. Tropical Storm Debbie became a hurricane. It's about 80 miles south-southeast of Tallahassee. Maximum sustained winds, 80 miles per hour. Forecasters at the National Hurricane Center say Debbie is nearing landfall and the eastern portion of the eyewall already moving on shore in the Big Bend region. So a hurricane warning and a storm surge warning now in effect. At the peak, about 100,000 homes were without power across Florida. And currently, Pinellas County has the highest number of outages with nearly 28,000. Sarasota County has 8,400. And then up in the Big Bend counties, Columbia has 16,000 outages. That's half of the customers in the entire county. And Levy County also has 10,000, and they only have about 25,000 homes uh, who are customers of power. So it's definitely having a big impact right now and is expected to be making landfall. And then moving to the northeast into Georgia and eventually South Carolina. So North Florida and then those other states could be dealing with a stalled or at least a very slow-moving storm bringing a foot of rain or more to some areas. Looking at some of the flooding from Cedar Key. uh, Doesn't look good in that particular neighborhood. What is uh, landfall officially? Is it like when just a portion of the eye hits land kind of like in in football if just like you know one part of the football crosses the white line of the end zone that that's a that's a touchdown i think is that uh, how it works well it's not as clear cut as that because okay. there you have actual lines that you can look at and say hey right. they they cross the line in the case of a hurricane uh, depending on how organized the uh, eye is it's usually closer to the center of the eye itself okay. but but in category 1 storms that can be kind of a muddy yeah. looking uh, eye of a storm and so uh, we're kind of seeing the bands of the eye hitting the coast but mm-hmm. it hasn't crossed officially so, so i think it has actually yeah ju- i think it just I, did i'm just seeing a po- pop up now 15 seconds ago debbie has made landfall near steinhatchy florida yeah there i mean go. chris uh, you got to come in prepared get uh, on yeah it, chris. what come what on the hell? why don't uh, you have this weather right in front of you <laughs> i mean just got updated in 15 seconds you well, need well, to, I be on top to come of in stuff. here <laughs> And we need to earn the trust of our new South Florida listeners, yeah, Chris. Exactly. Come on, we're counting on you. Uh, this this storm, though, it's impacted so much of the state. So obviously, when it was first, you know, approaching uh, Florida, making its way into the Gulf, some of those bands they were hitting South Florida, and then throughout the course of the day yesterday, uh, you know, you were having areas all the way from down down in South Florida to Central Florida get impacted by these uh, severe storms uh, associated with Debbie. And now, I mean, it's uh, really hitting central and northern Florida pretty hard, and uh, it's already starting to cross over into into Georgia. You know, when we looked at it initially, it was just a disturbance. It was like a giant blob of yeah. rain in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. But once it crossed Cuba and entered the very warm water of the Gulf, that's yep. when things started to get organized. So it became a tropical storm, and then, of course, a Category 1 hurricane very quickly. And we've already seen effects along the Gulf Coast, like storm surge, causing some flooding damage and even some uh, evacuations of some communities that are vulnerable to rising water. And that's supposed to get worse today for some areas because of the the way the tides are working. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a high tide effect, which will make the storm surge even more intense in certain areas. So those are part of the problems that we're dealing with with the storm. Uh, But again, you know, this is something that we could be seeing for the remainder of the hurricane season as these disturbances or even tropical storms move into the Gulf Yep, because of the temperature of the water. Right. It could lead to intensification and, you know, much more powerful storms. I'm wondering how close Debbie ended up hitting compared to Adalia. It's, I mean, it Let looks me like look. it's almost yeah. the exact same area. It's, it's kind of crazy. It really crazy. does look like it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. It was that, it was that Big Bend area. Uh, I remember Cedar Key uh, got hit real hard with Adalia. And again, Luckily, these aren't very populated areas, um, but still, you know, the amount of damage and, and they've had uh, less than a year to recover yeah. uh, from what Adalia did to that area. Not so, as populated. So there's as, uh, 19 miles between Keaton Beach, where uh, Idalia made landfall, and Steinhatchee, where this one just made landfall. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 19, 19, miles. 19 miles. Yep. That's yeah. crazy. But that was a Category 3. Yeah. So yeah, we're talking storm. about a much different uh, right. you know, strength of storm. But that, you know, you say, well, it's a rural area, not as many people. Tell that to the folks in no, Columbia exactly. County. No, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially they're without power here on August 5th. That yeah. sucks. Yeah, uh, and, and, and heavy rain sticking. to come. Yeah. I mean, this thing is a slow-moving storm when it hits land. 
and uh, could take some time to get through. And that's always a problem when you have uh, heavy rains. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you're looking at a foot or, or more of rain. Uh, that'll cause a major flooding and, and big problems. And in an area where, uh, you know, they've already suffered a lot of damage because right. of the uh, hurricane a couple of years ago. So obviously we'll be paying close attention to this as it develops. But uh, the latest is that it made landfall. Yeah. I just found that out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> probably now, uh, what, like a minute or two first. ago? Yeah, Chris, heard it here. You heard it here yep. first. <laughs> All right. What else so, is going on this morning, Chris? Well, Democrats have been trying to avoid divisive messaging after the selection of Kamala Harris as the presidential nominee. But the choice for her running mate is becoming competitive and divisive. Donors, special interest groups, political rivals, all from the party's moderate and progressive wing lobbying for candidates. Mm -hmm. And they have uh, turned sharply on one of the favorites. Governor Shapiro of Pennsylvania has drawn opposition from progressives and even a senator in his own state. It involves support for Israel, also some comments that he made while in college. Now, this has to do with the fact that There's been a lot of uh, controversy surrounding the situation in Israel and Gaza. And Michigan, which is a must-win state for the Democrats, Mm -hmm. has a large Arab-American population. And the concern is that Shapiro could drive out opposition to his candidacy. Right. The problem is Shapiro is a very popular governor from perhaps the state Democrats need the most in this uh, upcoming election. The the issue between... Shapiro and Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman. That's what I find to be really interesting. It was a, an article in, I think it was Politico that came out uh, over the weekend. And I guess this goes back a ways between the two. They got a little bit of a rivalry from their time serving on like the, the board, board of pardons. pardons. Yeah. yeah. There was apparently one really big case where Fetterman wanted to give leniency mm-hmm. and Shapiro said no way and they went at it. Yeah. And because in Israel, uh, you know, on the, on the issue of Israel, uh, they're in lockstep. Uh, they're both uh, yeah. staunch proponents of Israel, so it wouldn't be that issue for those two. Um, but I, I think you have to put Shapiro as the favorite just because of how important Pennsylvania is. And then it looks like you've got Arizona Senator Mark Kelly, you've got Minnesota Governor uh, Tim Walls, who uh, is uh, the pick of Nancy Pelosi, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Sanders. Uh, so that part of the Democratic Party, that's who they want. You've also got Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir. I think those are the are the f- four main uh, candidates here. And then you've got Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker and Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who uh, they were also part of the vetting process, but I don't think they're going to get picked. So, And then over the weekend, it was just all kinds of speculation. You had, you know, this person in this car, and they're going here, right. and what's <laughs> happening over there. And then you had, what was it, the mayor of Philadelphia? The Philadelphia mayor put out this ad, and in it, it said, we support Kamala Harris for president and Josh Shapiro for vice president. So people ran with that saying, right. oh, they were probably supposed to tweet this out next week. I and, was like, let me yeah. tell you something. The mayor of Philadelphia doesn't know before, you know, everybody else knows. Give me a break. Uh, She was just supporting uh, Shapiro for that position. And then you had Mark Kelly. He put out something on X. There were two things on X, and one of them is still there. The first one was he said, now I'm going to serve Arizonans. And then the other thing he put out was a picture of him with, like, with some military people saying, when your country calls on you to serve, you take the call. So it looks like he's saying, like, I'm the vice presidential nominee, but we don't know yet. So it's kind (laughs) of They're kind of trolling us a little bit. Each one of the candidates has positives and negatives. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, Shapiro, obviously, uh, governor of Pennsylvania, a must-win state. Mm -hmm. But if he costs you Michigan, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, Obviously, the Arizona senator, he's an astronaut, uh, wife of a high-profile gun uh, control activist. Mm -hmm. and Has some dealings with China that could become problematic. Yeah, he's had, you know, issues there. And, you know, his personality isn't in the most electrifying. Right. And then Tim Walls is, he sort of take away the youth card from Kamala Harris because he's uh, close to 70 and, uh, you know, is... Not, uh, you know, part of that sort of young movement no, that she's and he's been portraying so far. The most progressive out of the the main candidates, too. So, yeah, uh, we might learn today uh, who the who the nominee will be. It could come as early as today. Chris Trankman with today's top stories. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you.